Hey, what's up and thanks for clicking in. My name is Jason and in this video, we're going to be discussing exactly what Bitcoin miners are doing when mining for Bitcoin. What would you say you do here? Now, I know I've talked about this in the past and I've described this as a group of computers ganging up and combining their resources to solve this incredibly difficult cryptographic puzzle. And while that's definitely true, in today's video, we're going to dive a little bit deeper and we're going to see what it takes and how they go about solving that puzzle. Now, as always, going to do my best to break this down as simply as possible. And if you do enjoy this video, I encourage you to subscribe. If you have a couple extra seconds and you're feeling extra generous, please click the like button as well. It really helps out the channel. Now let's jump right in. One cryptographic function that is extremely important in Bitcoin mining is hashing. And hashing in its simplest terms is taking an input of any length and giving out an output of a fixed length. And because that's not a very good description, we're going to jump into my computer right now and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by this. All right, so here we are. This is Google homepage and I'm just going to type in right here, SHA 256 hash generator. And all these kind of do the same thing, but I really like this one. So I'm going to go here. And so what this is, is a hash generator for SHA-256. And SHA-256 is Secure Hashing Algorithm. And 256 stands for 256 bits in the output. And remember, we talked about hashing is an input of any length with a fixed output. So for SHA-256, the output is 256 bits. And the reason that I've chosen this uh, algorithm for us today is because this is the same hashing algorithm that Bitcoin uses. So anything that you type in here is going to automatically put in an output. So the hash of hello, written exactly like this, is this. But you can see right now, if I go in and, and just the smallest change, like I make this a capital H, changes the whole thing completely. So that's capital and that's lowercase and that's nothing. So this can be for one word. This can be for an entire book. It doesn't matter. It's going to put this 256 bit output for whatever you put into the input. I think the easiest way to think about this is kind of like a digital fingerprint. So if anything is changed with the input, the output will change. Just like uh, it's very, very unique, just like a fingerprint. And important things to consider, you know, what makes up a good hashing algorithm? It has to be one way. So I put in the input, I get the output, but I can't derive the input from the output. There's no way to work backwards to, to get the input. Also, the output doesn't reveal any information about the input. There's nothing in here that will tell you that this is this. And third thing that's really important to remember is you want to avoid collisions within this framework. So that means that every input is going to generate a unique output and no two inputs should generate the same output. And those three things are really, really important uh, to make this whole system work. All right, so now that we understand hashing, we can move on and talk about what the miners are actually doing. So when a miner picks up a block, the main part of the block that they're concerned about is this block header. The block header is what they're, where all the information that they need is contained. So the first thing they're going to look for is this previous block hash. And that's going to be contained in the block header. And the previous block hash is like a fingerprint of the previous block. It's a hash of everything that was contained in the previous blocks header all hashed together and you get this output here. So this is like a unique fingerprint and what links the blocks together throughout the chain. The next thing that's going to appear is the Merkle root. And the Merkle root is just a fancy word for the hash of all the transactions contained within the block. So this is essentially a fingerprint of the block because it's all the transactions hashed together. And I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like right here. Okay, so the Merkle root also sometimes known as the root hash, is the fingerprint of all the transactions contained within a block. And I wanna show you exactly what I mean by that. So imagine what we're looking at right here is a block. 
and this block has eight transactions in it. And you can see these eight transactions along the bottom of the block. So each transaction has transactional data contained with inside, and that information is hashed. So you'll see transaction one corresponds with hash one, and this is a unique fingerprint associated with this transaction. Same thing for transaction two, hash two, transaction three, hash three, and so forth and so on, all the way to transaction eight, which has hash eight. So that's the first row. We've established the hashes of each of the transactions. But to take things even further, we keep going. So we combine the hash of one and two to get this hash here. Then three and four produces a new output. Five and six, same thing. And seven and eight completes the second row. We keep going all the way up and you see how we're working kind of like a root, kind of like a tree root. So now we have the hash of one, two, three, four and five, six, seven, eight, ultimately working our way up to the root hash or Merkle root, which is this long string here, which is the hash of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can see that why this is important is because it's very unique because you can never go back and change four because it would mess up everything contained within here. And then once blocks add on, it messes up all of those blocks here. So that's what makes the blockchain very secure and limits the ability to change data. Okay, so we understand previous block hash. We understand Merkle root. Next thing is the difficulty target. And we're gonna come back and discuss this in a little bit. But one thing I want you to notice here is the amount of zeros that precede the number. So this difficulty target normally starts with a long string of zeros. And right now, the current amount of zeros that the difficulty target is starting with is 19. And if you remember from some previous videos, we've discussed that it takes 10 minutes to mine a block. And these zeros are what allow them to control the time. So if a lot of miners jump on the network and increase the hashing power, they'll add an additional zero. If miners jump off the network and there's less hashing power, they will take zeros away. And what that does is lead to how difficult it is to actually guess the output of the block. And the last piece of information you're going to see right here is the nonce. And nonce is a fancy word for a number once, which is basically a unique number. Uh, it's also the only variable in this situation. So I'll show you what I mean here in a second, but these four items are what allow us to mine a block. And I'll show you exactly how we go about doing that right now. I appreciate you guys staying with me the whole time. I hope you've enjoyed this and let's get to the fun part right here. So we're back to the SHA-256 hash generator. So this top line here that I've put in, this is the previous block's header, the hash of the previous block's header. This second line represents the Merkle root. And this third line here represents the nonce, the variable in the situation. I've put this number here because this is the difficulty target. This is what we have to get our output lower than. So we have to put in numbers into this situation that are gonna produce an output that is lower or less than this difficulty target. So it's gonna to have to start with 19 zeros and then the next number is gonna have to be less than eight. So I'm gonna take this away for now and we can see with our previous block header hash, our Merkle root and our nonce, we do not get to a number starting with 19 zeros. So what hashing essentially is, is this number here, the top one, that doesn't change, that's a unique identifier. So is the second line, but this number nonce, this can change, this is a variable. So we get the nonce and it's not right. So what a Bitcoin miner does is, it's 8954092333. We take off the last three and we make it a four. It changed, nope, not doesn't start with 19 zeros, make it a five. Nope, doesn't start with 19 zeros, make it a six. Nope. And you guys get this, right? And I haven't even got one that started with one zero or had a zero in the first 19 spots. So you can imagine how long this is gonna take and how much power this is gonna take. So that is essentially what Bitcoin miners are doing. They are adjusting the nonce by one at a time in effort to guess a number that starts with 19 zeros, which is less than the difficulty target. Well, that is all for today's video. 
I really hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't get a chance to subscribe earlier, now is a perfect time. And if you weren't sure if you liked the video earlier, but now you do, now's the perfect time to like it. Until the next time, guys, thank you and be safe.